Hi, so I wanted to talk a little bit today about self-advocacy and why that's really important, at least I feel that's important in Parkinson's, especially with young onset Parkinson's or early onset Parkinson's. Well, I've had Parkinson's like two years or um, I've been diagnosed for two years, but I probably actually had it for a lot longer. Um, I do these videos to, wait, to raise awareness that there are younger people with Parkinson's. I'm not really that young. I'm actually at the end of the young scale. I was diagnosed in my 40s. There are a lot of people that are in their 20s, 30s. There are, even is like juvenile Parkinson's where there are kids with Parkinson's. But we're very rarely like shown in the media, so most people think that that it only affects older people. A lot of people are aware of Michael J. Fox, but I still think that like he's the only one that people think of when they think of young onset Parkinson's. So back to self-advocacy and why I think it's important. I think it's important that you know as much as you can, at least in the beginning, about Parkinson's so that you can plan what you want to do. And what I mean by that is that there's no cure right now for Parkinson's. So when you go into a doctor, generally they're focused on giving you the medication, but the medication doesn't, it's not going to cure Parkinson's. It just kind of masks the symptoms of Parkinson's and makes your life a little bit easier. But it's not like you can just take that medication and things are okay for the rest of your life because your Parkinson's is slowly progressing. In the young onset or early onset population, it progresses really, really slow. So that is one good thing. If you have to have a good thing about having Parkinson's when you're younger, that is one point, that we progress extremely slow. Another kind of good thing is that our progression tends to not be as severe as someone that gets it um, at the typical age. But what I want to say is that, yeah, when you once you are at the stage that you're getting medicated for the Parkinson's, and I guess I want to add too that you don't have to have medication right away. I think I've had it for a good 20 years and it didn't really well, it was affecting me, but not to the point that I need to go into a doctor or be medicated. If I had been medicated like 20 years ago, it really wouldn't have like done anything. Like it, it's not really that beneficial to know it younger if you have Parkinson's. It really doesn't affect your Parkinson's, although I think it could have an effect on um, maybe slowing the progression as far as like if I had known that I did have Parkinson's I probably would have exercised better and definitely like reduced my stress. I think stress had a lot to do with kind of progressing my Parkinson's. But yes, once you are treated, after a while you'll kind of figure out that medication is one of the only ways that really um, the doctors are offering to help with your symptoms. I mean, they might um, suggest like, you know, different kind of like exercise, physical therapy, um, other kind of therapies. I'm not saying that they're not going to do that, but what I am saying is that you can't leave it only to the doctors. You have to con take control of your health um, and use them as like an asset or part of your team. But you're actually, I believe, have to be directing what you want to do, what's important to you, because there are decisions to to make it with Parkinson's as far as like how medicated you want to be. Um, you know, can you be without the medication? The medic because the medication, at least what I feel, is any medication is toxic. I know that the um, doctors will probably say that it's a very safe drug. And um, no, maybe it is safe, but that's just my philosophy that any chemical, or any drug is generally tox toxic in one regard. So what I try to do is 
yes, I do take the medicine because if I didn't have that medicine, it would affect my quality of life greatly. Um, so I do take it. I'm, I'm reluctant to take it, but I know at this point I can't do without it, so I take that. But I try to like take as little of it as I can get away with it or get away with. And why I say that is that with the Parkinson drugs, particularly like my experience with Cinemet, is that you have to take more and more. And why they say that is, is that your Parkinson's is slowly progressing. So it kind of gets to a stage that you need more Cinemet. And that's kind of like different in everybody. For me, it seems to be like every couple of years I'm taking more um, Cinemet, but I definitely like try to drag that out um, as much as possible. So, some doctors will tell you not that you don't need to know anything about um, Parkinson's and I think why they say that is that there are a lot of like negative things, um, maybe negative is not the right word, but when you do Google something on Parkinson's, you tend to see pictures of people in late stage Parkinson's and it's not like there's anything wrong with that, it's just that the media tends to only show like late stage Parkinson's and not the other stages of Parkinson's. Every Parkinson's person is different. You may get to that stage or you may not get to that stage. But generally if we're young onset or early onset, it's going to take a while to get to that stage. And um, so yeah, so you've got a lot of time and a lot of decisions to make. Um, so that's kind of partly why I believe in self-advocacy. Um, I think you should learn everything you can. Um, the other factor that I've noticed is that non-neurologists really don't know too much about Parkinson's. I think they, they know about Parkinson's, but they really don't know about Parkinson's. So I've had a lot of cases that I have to like explain to people what Parkinson's means. Even the medical people, um, a medical doctor that, that doesn't specialize in Parkinson's may not realize that there's other symptoms that go along with the motion problems. So a lot of times I'll have to go in, if I'm going to a different kind of doctor, kind of pre-plan in my mind what I'm going to say because I am kind of like a quiet person. I have to kind of like know what outcome I want and kind of explain things to the doctor so that they understand the Parkinson's without making it seem like they don't know too much. So I don't know if I'm explaining myself really well, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I hadn't learned a lot about the Parkinson's. Now I think you can learn too much about it and then it gets kind of like overwhelming. So I do think like you have to, you know, stop learning too much at a certain point, but I meet a lot of people, especially older Parkinson's people that have had Parkinson's for like 20 years or 30 years, and they don't really know anything about Parkinson's, and even like the simple things they, d they don't know. And I don't know if it's a generational thing, but they just like listen to their doctors. And the doctors I've seen a lot of people with Parkinson's, they don't have a lot of time. I think they do try to individualize, um, especially with the medication, but you just can't rely on your doctor. It's like, you know, your problem, you should be an expert on your disease or your Parkinson's. But that's just kind of like how I deal with the Parkinson's and how I feel about it. It may not be, you know, something that would be good for you necessarily. So that's about all I have to say about that topic. <laughs>